Welcome back. In our last video, we went ahead and took some time to look at the email section of the Outlook Anywhere application. In this video, I'm going to take a little bit of time and introduce you to the calendar portion of Outlook Anywhere. You can get into your Outlook Anywhere account from any computer that has internet access, and you simply log in through your campus portal or go to email.fullerton.edu and log in with your campus credentials. Once you're inside of Outlook Anywhere, you're going to see that you have a number of icons over here to the left that will allow you to navigate to the different sections. I'm going to go ahead and click on Calendar here, and you'll see my calendar appears. And again, this is going to be very familiar to you if you've worked with the calendar inside of the full version of Microsoft Outlook. Above the different navigation tabs here, we have a calendar for the month. And you can see there are, are arrows to the left and the right of the month name. And I can use that to scroll month by month. I can also click the drop down arrow to the right of the month name and select a month. So if I want to jump to June really quickly, I can do that. We're still not at that specific point in this central area right over here. So after I select a month, what I'm going to need to do is select a day. And then you're going to see it jumps to that place. You also have some different view control options in the toolbar above your calendar. You're going to see you can go to the current date today. If I click on that, you'll see I jump to February 3rd. Right now we're looking at this in daily view, but I can also do a work week view, which will show me Monday through Friday, a week view, which will show me Sunday through Saturday, as well as a month view right here. I'm going to go ahead and go back to daily view. And you're going to see one difference between daily view and the others is you have a preview pane right over here to the right. And we'll see how that works. Again, I'm going to go ahead and say, click go to today to go to the current date. Now, you're going to see the new button here. And again, it has a drop down arrow on it, just like it did in the email section. If I click new, it will create a new appointment on your calendar. But if I click the drop down arrow, it's going to give me some choices. It'll allow me to choose to create a new appointment, set up a meeting request, or send an email message. In this case, I want to set up an appointment, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you're going to see the appointment scheduling window comes up. Under subject, I'm going to go ahead and type training meeting. Location is going to be PLS 255. And I can change the start date and time right here. I want to go ahead and change this from starting at 11.30 to starting at 1.30. And you're going to see it automatically adjusted the finish time based on your new start time. But I can click that drop down arrow and I can choose any duration I want for the meeting. I'm going to say this goes to 3 p.m. You also have the option right over here to make this an all day event. An event differs from a meeting or an appointment in the fact that it's something that occurs all day and it may not be something specific that you need to go to. For example, you may want to put somebody's birthday or some sort of an anniversary date on your calendar so that you remember. Or just a general reminder. Checking all day event will allow you to do that. And you're going to see when I check that, the time got wiped out because it is an all day event. If I click that again, you're going to see the time reappears. You also have the option whether or not you're going to set a reminder right here. And the duration, or I'm sorry, not the duration, but the time before the item comes due that you want the reminder to come up. Do you want a one hour reminder, a two hour reminder? You can set that for whatever you want right there. Or you can uncheck the box if you don't want a reminder to come up. You also have the option to show this time as either free, busy, or tentative. If I click this drop down right here, you're going to see free, busy, tentative, and away. Most people on campus use the away option for when they're going to be off campus, not just for when they're going to be away from the office. You can also mark this message private. If you mark a message private 
and you give somebody delegate access to your uh, to view your uh, calendar they will not be able to see your um, message so let's say you have a doctor's appointment or something like that that you wish to keep private but you still need to share your calendar with people you can use this option right here finally you can put notes about the calendar or about the appointment right down here and you're going to see we've got a full toolbar here that will allow you to format this however you want change the font the font size bold italic underline bulleted numbered lists highlighting font color almost anything you would want there so I'm just going to go ahead and type um, this is whoops this is a sample appointment now another thing that you can do that you don't frequently do with appointments you do it more often with meetings is put an attachment into an item so let's say this was a meeting request you could attach the agenda you could attach notes from the previous meeting whatever you want to this appointment and then when somebody goes ahead and opens the appointment up they'll have those documents there or the meeting request up they'll have those documents present so you can insert attachments into a calendar appointment or meeting request you can also put images or pictures into your um, appointment set the recurrence if I click that you're going to see something that comes up much like the recurrence options in the full version of Outlook you choose the pattern of recurrence is this going to recur on a daily basis and if it does should it occur every one day or every other day if I wanted it to do every other day I can put the value 2 in there if I wanted it to be every third day I could put the value whoop, not value 4 the value 3 in there you also have an option to have this occur every weekday Monday through Friday if I click the weekly options again you can choose to repeat it every week every other week every third week so on and so forth and you can check multiple days of the week that this is going to occur so if this was a class that meets every Tuesday Thursday I could check Tuesday and Thursday you have monthly recurrence patterns that will allow you to specify the specific day of the month or every other month just like before or you can choose the first Thursday of every month or the third Sunday of every month once you have set up the recurrence pattern you have to choose how often or how long that's going to recur for now no end date will basically make this meeting recur this appointment recur forever every you know year out or you can say um, end after a specific number of occurrences in this case 10 is the default but I could say end this after five recurrences or end this after 50 recurrences and finally you can put an end by date and if I click that drop down it gives me a little mini calendar so if I wanted it to um, go through the end of the semester I could go ahead and pick May 27th so you set your occurrence up in here and you click OK when you're finished I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and then save and close right up here when I click save and close you're going to see the appointment appears and if I was to go to other months you would see that appointment um, will come up in those other months as well I'm gonna go ahead and just click right off of that date you're gonna notice over here in your little mini calendar the date February 3rd is in bold whereas the rest are not and that indicates that there's an appointment or an item in your calendar on that day when I click the 8th nothing is going on on my calendar on the 8th completely empty but if I click on the 3rd you'll see there is that training meeting if I was to skip over to March well there's March 3rd and there's the recurrence of that meeting April the first Thursday here is actually the seventh there's that training meeting same thing for March well, when I come to June you're gonna see 
nothing is bolded out indicating that there are no calendar entries for that month. And you'll see the recurrence stopped at that point. I can very easily go back to my uh, date by clicking um, one of these calendar items here or clicking go to today and you're going to see it jumps right back there. If I click on this meeting request right here or if I should say if I double click on it it's going to open it up. Now if the meeting has recurrences attached to it you're going to have the option to open up just this particular occurrence and make some changes and that would leave the series unchanged or you can open up the entire series and make a change that would affect all of the appointments in this series. I'm going to go ahead and say just this occurrence and you're going to see the item comes up. You're also going to see I have the times over here and the date. If I want to go in and change something about the recurrence I would need to click on this recurrence icon right there again. You're going to notice there it's blacked out, or I'm sorry, it's grayed out. It's not in black. I can't actually go in at this point and change the recurrence because I just opened up this one individual item. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and then double click on it again, and I'm going to say this series. And at this point, you're going to notice some differences. I don't see the dates and times. And that's again because it recurs on different dates and times. If I click on the recurrence option right here, you'll see I can go in and I can change the settings. So for example, if I want this to end at the end of June instead, I could click there, go to June, and select that, and click OK. It's going to go ahead and confirm that I want to make that change. I'm going to say Modify Meeting. And now this will occur until the end of June instead of till the end of um, to the end of uh, May. I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Close there. You'll see no changes were made there. But when I go ahead and jump to June, actually I'm going to jump to May and then click that arrow right there. You'll see June 2nd does have an occurrence of that. If you click on a meeting or on an appointment and you click the delete option it will delete that item. Since this again is part of a series of items it's going to ask do you want to delete just this occurrence or do you want to delete the entire series of appointments from your calendar. And I'm going to say just delete this occurrence and you'll see it disappears there. If I go back to today the other meetings are still there. Well, in this video, we went ahead and showed you how to set appointments up on your calendar. In the next video, we want to show you how to send a meeting request.